This is an old P&H brand AC only stick welder. Model number is TI-295. There's not a whole lot of information about these online. I'm not sure when it was made, I would guess late 50s or early 60s. I found this at an estate sale. It was an old welding shop here in town. A guy started in the 50s, he built the building himself and then his son ran the business and he recently passed away so some of his family were selling items out of the shop. I just thought this was really neat. It was, looked like it hadn't been used in a long time. It was just sitting under some shelves being used as a table basically. So I wasn't able to test it. I offered the guy 50 bucks and he happily accepted. I figured it was worth the gamble. These are pretty simple. It's just a giant transformer basically. I figured if anything was wrong, it could likely be fixed. So from what I read, P&H was a mining company. They manufactured mining equipment and they weren't really impressed with any of the available welders at the time, so they decided to build their own. First thing I did when I bought this was pull the case, just to inspect everything. You can see that somebody had cut a hole in this lid. One of the few discussions I found about this online, somebody mentioned that these didn't have great cooling, so I'm not sure if this originally had a fan, I guess maybe it was mounted down here. But this was probably cut for cooling. Unfortunately, right where they cut is where the wiring schematic was. But anyway, they, they did put a fan in here. This little bracket was added. It was actually a little GE cast iron condenser fan. I. I think it was straight out of a refrigerator and it was a 110 volt. So since this can be used on 230 volt or 460 volt, here's this little instruction sheet of how to make your connections with these wires. And this was wired incorrectly. It wasn't correct for a 230 or 460 volt, but I, I corrected this for running on 230 volt. It, it had this uh, cord on it, huge heavy duty cord. I'm guessing it's the original. I think it's four gauge wire, but unfortunately it's so old and you can't really roll it up anymore. It's just, you know, past its usable life. I'm not sure how they were running this. I can't imagine it would have even ran with how they had this hooked up. So I, I bought some parts for it. Here, uh, my buddy down the street gave me these muffin fans. So that's what I'm gonna use, and these are 230 volt. So what I'll do is cut out this old bracket, and I built this little frame, and that'll weld in there. And I'll screw these fans down in place. I'm gonna patch this hole somebody cut. Use this louver graft this in here somehow. I have to do a little trimming. I guess it'd be easier to put here, but this is where the fans will be. This is just an eight gauge cord, but really all I need is eight gauge. That's sufficient for 50 amps and I'll never be drawing more than that with this welder. Old uh, Tweco ground clamp. I found this new old stock um, back when these were actually made in US. Welding cable for uh, making a ground and a stinger. This thing didn't come with leads. Here's these tapered connectors. This uses kind of an unusual connection. I bought these. These are Lenko LC10MP. And these are intended for old Miller welders. It's very slight, but they are tapered. And they almost fit this, but they're a little large. So I'm gonna have to turn these down on the lathe or maybe I'll just file them. 
All right, I cut out that bracket that someone welded in place to retrofit that 110 volt fan and replaced it with this little frame. The muffin fans are connected to that frame and I just hit everything with some red oxide so it matches. Each one of these just has two little terminals. They're like miniature spade terminals. And those connect here and here. These two wires are straight from the switch, so this is pretty much switch 230 volt. But this terminal and this one I've connected to are tied together down here. Looking back, I guess it would have been cleaner to just tie these wires to this, but I just did what was already there. All right, this project's coming along smoothly. Um, I got this power cord all hooked up and just about to turn it on and test these fans out. Pretty exciting. So I reused this original connector. The cord's a little smaller, so I threw some electric tape on there, but it's nice and tight. These connectors are held together with quarter inch bolts and then some heavy duty heat shrink to cover them up. All right. Really work. Yeah, they put out a good amount of air too. Right on. These are gonna work great. Let me eat. There's just a little bag. Cool. So I'll just get that lid all fixed up and this thing's almost ready to use. I'm welding this louver in place now. I'm installing it flush so I can smooth these welds out afterward and it'll look like it was supposed to be there. Pretty much the same concept as doing body work. I think this steel is 16 or 18 gauge, so it's a little thicker than a modern car. But I'm just doing a series of tacks. I change positions for each tack. Just go slowly. It doesn't have to look pretty. It's more important to not build up a bunch of heat and warp these panels. Here's just a little tip. So when you have poor fit up like this, this is a pretty large gap for such thin metal. So if I try to just tack this right away, it would burn right through. What I like to do is put a little tack on each side of the panel, each side of the gap, and then that establishes a little thicker metal. And after that's cooled, I can come back and with a third tack, join those together. Once you get enough of those built up, like you can see here, you can start tacking just to the side of your tacks. So that's just a little tip. You're not always gonna have a perfect fit and this is kind of a pain. You have to be extra careful with a big gap like this because once those welds cool, they're gonna shrink and it's really gonna wanna warp the panel. But I'm just taking my time and I think this will turn out well. Well, the old welder's all fixed up and ready to use. Louvers in place. You can feel some air coming out of it when the welder's running, so that's a good sign. It originally vented, there's a gap between the case and the lid, but this is more direct path. Kind of a 10 foot paint job. I left all the dings and stuff in there. It matches the character of the welder. This was black and I thought that's how it came, but when I was grinding on this, I found a layer of this color paint, so I wanted to match that. It's actually pretty hard to find 1950s gray green color. This is the best I could come up with. Rust-Oleum Automotive Self-Etching Primer. I think it's actually pretty good. Maybe a little more gray in it, but I'm happy. 
It had a matte finish, of course, since it's primer, so I threw a little clear on there. Got these leads made, 25 foot each. These fit better now. I just chucked them in the lathe and uh, just sanded them down with some sandpaper. Forgot I had this old stinger in a drawer. I found this at a garage sale, never used. Uh, Tweeko brand matches the Tweeko ground clamp, so that's perfect. But I'm real happy with how this turned out. I think if somebody didn't look at this too closely, they'd think that was original. I ran a few beads with this thing. Here, I'll show you. There's a couple beads I ran with it. This is some just scrap 3 8 plate. This top one is 7018 AC, 8th inch. They ran nice and smooth. The bottom, uh, not so great. Uh, that was 7014. I don't know if I was using the right technique with that. I never even heard of this, but a guy I know had a bunch of these, so I wanted to try it. Here's some um, uh, 14 gauge. So I tried this 6013, 564. That looks pretty bad. I was kind of dialing it in. I really had to beat that slag off of there, but I turned it down and I don't know, that looks okay. This one ran real good. Uh, I just had a little box of these. I don't even know where I got them, but. X Ergon number 109, high strength, ACDC. That one was the smoothest. I bet these are expensive, but I'm going to look into maybe buying some of these if they're not too bad. But yeah, I'm not an amazing stick welder, but uh, now I have one to practice with. <laughs> My TIG welder will do stick welding, but I just don't really ever use it for that. Oh yeah, I was gonna show this. It's kind of a pain to adjust the amps on this. The, the scale here is just zero to 10 instead of an actual amperage readout. It does tell you the range down here, like low range is 25 to 150. There's higher range, but I guess it'll just take a little getting used to. Oh yeah, this is kind of neat. So when I first bought this, I looked up that patent number and I found record that P&H had sued Miller for copying one of their designs. I want to say the design was an uh, amperage adjustment, but yeah, I guess Miller won that case. So, kind of interesting history. Worked out well, though. I look forward to having this and practicing with it some more. And yeah, I think I'll end the video here, but... Thanks for watching.